Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and we're gonna make a plum tart. So, this is, if there's one dessert recipe, one fruit dessert recipe you should know, it's this one, because it works for all kinds of things, not just plums. Um, this is Marion Burroughs' recipe from the New York Times, like a, a while back, but right now, um, so my neighbor, my piano teacher actually, who's also my neighbor, has um, a plum tree, and these are the last plums of the season. My daughter and I went over and shook down the tree, so we're gonna make a plum tart out of those. This is like the third one we've made this year. Super simple recipe, really foolproof. Um, I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees. I'm gonna take a stick of butter, which is half a cup or about 115 grams of butter, okay? And put it in there, and I'm gonna take between three quarters of a cup and one cup of sugar, so that's about 150 grams of sugar, more or less. Okay, and then we're gonna cream that. You can do this in a stand mixer. Um, you could do it with a hand mixer like this. You do want that butter to be soft before you start, and if your butter is not at a, not at room temperature before you start. I had this stick of butter out on the counter for maybe, I don't know, a couple hours, but you, you know, you can leave it out overnight and that's fine. Um, if it's not, you can do it in the microwave. Um, just take, set your microwave on low power and microwave it in like 15 second bursts until it's nice and soft. Um, that's the trick to microwaving butter is you don't want to go high heat because that'll melt it. So you go low, low power and that'll uh, soften it without melting. Oops, let me get... Don't want to drop all this butter on the floor here. One of the best uses, one of the one of the very good use cases for microwave is melting butter. Um, my old friend, the uh, the late Josh Ozerski, who was a lover of burgers and meat, he he wrote a book called Meet Me in Manhattan. Um, was a great food writer, uh, but he he and I had a long exchange about um, grilled cheeses and uh, whether you should be toasting them in butter or in mayo and whether you should be putting the, uh, the butter in the pan or spreading it on the bread. And I always argued, well, I just put it in the pan because my butter is never soft enough to spread on my bread. And I don't generally keep butter out on the counter like some people do because we just don't go through it fast enough and my butter always kind of turns to cheese. And um, he said, well, why don't you just use softened butter? And I said, well, if I had the foresight, to soften my butter, I would, but usually when I'm having a grilled cheese, I'm not gonna have that kind of foresight. And his answer is like, well, softened butter is why God invented the microwave. And I think he's right. Anyhow, this time I did have the foresight to soften my butter. And so all we're doing now is creaming the butter and sugar together. It doesn't even have to be that well creamed. So some cake recipes, when you cream your butter and sugar together like this, you want it to get really sort of fluffy um, and smooth. With this cake, it's so forgiving. I found it doesn't really matter that much as long as, as long as you're kind of at this stage where there's no like big chunks of uh, unsugared butter around, you're good. That's about all we're looking for there. Okay. All right. So next, we're gonna add a cup of flour. So that's also about 150 grams of flour. If you're if you're working a uh, on a scale as many people do, although for, for this kind of this particular recipe, it doesn't really matter that much because it's so forgiving. All right, so so far, 115 grams of butter, one stick of butter, 150 grams of sugar, that's three quarters cup, 150 grams of flour, that's about one cup. I'm gonna take about a teaspoon, baking powder more or less, pinch of salt, okay. The recipe doesn't call for cinnamon, uh, vanilla, but I'm using vanilla. Actually, in fact, I'm using artificial imitation vanilla extract, which um, for baked purposes comes out just fine. You don't need to spray, you don't need to use the um, the expensive stuff for if you're, if you're gonna be baking it in a cookie or a cake like this. Um, the times I would use the real nice vanilla are for custards, things where the flavor's really gonna come through. Um, so like ice cream, creme anglaise, if I was making like vanilla milk, which my daughter likes to drink, I would use the real vanilla. But for this, fake stuff is fine. You can, of course, I mean, you can use the real vanilla if you want. All right, so that was all the ingredients. Two more eggs, and that's it. We're gonna beat this. Beat this into a batter. Okay. Okay. 
That's it. All right, now I got, so you can do this in a spring form pan. You can do this in a cake pan. I'm doing it in a cast iron skillet. Um, and, the, and again, like the size of the pan actually doesn't even matter. Everything in this recipe, super forgiving. Um, you can do it like an eight inch spring form pan, a nine inch, 10 inch, just, you know, different form factors give you slightly different results. Um, you know, obviously the smaller the pan, the deeper it's gonna be, but it's gonna work just fine no matter what you do. So butter up your pan. I'm using a uh, cast iron skillet. Get your batter in there. Okay, we're just gonna spread it out. All right, so spread it out on an even layer across the bottom. Now, if you don't have plums, if you don't have plums, that's fine. Uh, this will work with apricots, cherries, peaches, basically any kind of juicy fruit, raspberries, doesn't really matter that much, but the recipe was originally written for these Italian prune plums. Um, so that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna use about, about a dozen of these. So I'm just gonna split them in half like this. These were very, very, this is, if you have overripe fruit like this, ooh, not, that guy's a little moldy. If you got overripe fruit like this, um, this is a great use for it. Let's start with that many and see what we get. All right, these are very loose stoned fruits. It makes it easy. So we're just gonna push them in. Now, when I go around the edges, okay, I try and leave a layer of batter between the plum and the edge of the pan, because otherwise the plum kind of sticks to the, to the pan. So that's really the only kind of part where you gotta be a little bit careful. Oh, the original recipe also calls for placing these face down, but I actually like the way they look when you do them face up. But again, it doesn't matter. You can do it any which way you want. So if I was gonna do cherries, I would do the exact same thing. I would pit them, shove them in here. Doing raspberries, basically the same thing, except no pitting involved, just kind of shove them onto the top and push them down. Now as we go through, we're gonna really cram the fruit in here, okay? Get it all in there as tight as possible. You're gonna look like you're overloading it, and you're like, how's this possibly gonna work? How's this gonna bake into a cohesive cake with this much random crap on top? Look at that, I think we got the right, exact right number of plums here. Okay. There we go. All right, now last thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna get a little bit more sugar and just sprinkle it over the top. Uh, oh, and then a lemon. Now, if you do like spices, you know, cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, something like that, you can sprinkle it over the top right now, but that's by no means necessary. Um, I prefer just letting the fruit come through. A little bit of vanilla. All right, and that's it. So now this is gonna go into this 350 degree oven for about one hour. I'm gonna check on it after 50 minutes, but uh, we'll, we'll put it in there for one hour and see, uh, it's probably gonna take one hour in the end. All right, so I will see you in 55 minutes or so. I don't know, something around there, 50, 55 minutes. Um, so we're gonna check it. Um, I've got here a cake tester. This is a very useful tool in the kitchen. Any professional kitchen is gonna have a lot of these, not just for testing cake, but also sort of testing the doneness of meat. Um, I can show you how to do that in a second, but all right, here's what it looks like. So to use our cake tester, we're gonna just stick it in the center here. And what we're looking for is the batter to be completely set. So if the test cake tester comes out clean, which it does, that means our batter is set. If it comes out with a little bit of wet batter on it, then we should stick it back in the oven until it's done. But 
this is done. Um, if you use a cake tester to test meat, the way you would do it is you take it, stick it into your meat like that, stick it all the way through, pinch it right where it goes on the surface of the meat, see right there, where I'm pinch it right here, then you pull it out, and you hold it underneath your lip to your chin, um, and that tells you how hot the meat is in the center, and of course you, you sort of get a feel for that as you cook more, um, but that's how you, that's how in a professional kitchen they will typically tell how well done a piece of meat is. Better than squeezing. Not as good as a thermometer, but oftentimes there's no time to use a thermometer. All right, so this is done. Um, so now we're just gonna wait for it to cool. Um, and you can see how like the juices all kind of mingle with the cake. It comes out really with this nice crust on top. Um, if this was spring form, you could undo the spring form and slide it out, but I'm just gonna let this rest in here. We wanna let it cool completely so that it sets and we can cut it. Um, so I'll probably actually just leave this on the counter, let it cool for about 15 minutes, then pop, uh, I'll probably take this wooden lid, lid like this and just stick this onto it overnight. And then tomorrow, um, we'll eat this for breakfast. So I'll see you in the morning, all right? So I'll see you overnight. Okay, so here we are, next day. There's our plum cake. There's my coffee. Doesn't this look good? All right, let me get a knife here. All right, so what I'd normally do is I take a, I take a thin metal spatula, go all the way around it like that. Okay. And then I take this lid and I'm gonna take a plate. Well, first is I'll invert it onto the lid. Let's see what happens. There we go. Then I'll invert it back onto a plate. Let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna cut into rectangles. Look at that, isn't that delicious? Or doesn't that look delicious? Um, so, this type of cake, I told you, completely foolproof. I've never had it go wrong, even when I've messed up the measurements. Um, and it works with a huge variety of fruit. Uh, but plum is the classic one. You can find this exact recipe um, on the New York Times website. Um, there is a paywall, or you can just follow along uh, in the video. Mm. Real good, yeah, okay, yeah, you can have some here. I have to come over here. Not in the kitchen, all right? All right. Oh, sit. Good girl. <laughs> mm. All right. I'm going to call my family down for breakfast. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.